Now, with the global economy in such volatility, what should investors do? Let's chat to Brett Evans, who is ex Executive Director at Atlas Wealth Management. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Welcome from Australia, actually. Yeah, thank you very much. So, uh, given that we've got all this volatility in commodities, in stocks, in currencies, yep. how should investors position themselves? Um, I think the hardest thing that people are dealing with right now is any one particular issue is hard enough to take into account what the net effect will be. The fact that we've got falling oil prices, we've got falling commodity prices, uh, interest rates are coming down, exchange rates are coming down. Uh, look, I think going forward, um, the biggest issue we're looking at right now is what's the global stimulus going to be? We've seen uh, a raft of cuts across the world, uh, ECB, PBOC, the RBA. Everyone's coming through with what we consider uh, a stimulus which is probably required. Um, where we're seeing things going for the next foreseeable future uh, is more so um, getting confidence back with the investors and also the consumers too. Mm -hmm. So in light of what the RBA and the PBOC has, have done this week, um, where do you see the, the Aussie and the Chinese economies going this year? Yeah, well, I think with the Australian economy we've got uh, obviously a rate cut that's come through. Uh, right now, 10-year and even three-year bonds are calling for the possibility of a further rate cut. Um, that is a, quite a big stimulus package for the Australian economy. Uh, a rate cut is equivalent to about uh, a 1% increase in GDP in the Australian um, economy. So that combined with a fall in oil prices, which is equivalent to about two um, rate cuts, combined with a 16% fall of the Australian dollar versus the RMB, we're starting to see a lot of catalysts coming through, uh, which will probably help the industrialised country uh, companies that haven't done so well in the past you know, pick up their game. Domestic production in Australia should pick up, uh, exports in Australia should pick up. But also, too, I think from the Chinese point of view, the Australian market is now to become a lot more appealing. You know, in the past, we've seen probably a, the currency being too strong and they've looked at other markets. Now the Australian dollar, with where it is, I think the Australian is back on the, uh, the radar screen. So what are you advising your clients? You know, which asset classes, how yep. long, what are they doing? Oh, look, I think anything with uh, strong cash flows, yield is, a, is a, uh, the holy grail that people are trying to chase these days. So uh, with rates coming down, uh, Australia's current cash rate at 2.25% with European and uh, American rates at 05 The problem people have got is uh, trying to generate a return on their capital. Um, right now we're seeing strong interest in infrastructure, strong interest in healthcare. Companies that have a strong... Uh, cash flow forecast and consistent earnings over a great amount of time. So that to me is, is the place that people are going to focus on. You know, I have friends in the investment banking industry and they're saying, why aren't Chinese companies going out to Australia to yep. acquire mines you know, yep. at a time when they're pretty much down? Yep. Um, what do you think? I think the, the issue we've got with the resource sector is the longevity of lower commodity prices. Uh, if we saw uh, a tailing off and the possible resurgence of commodity prices in the next 12 to 24 months, I think we'd see that. But I think people are sort of looking, looking at the prices now saying, is it going to be lower for longer? Um, I think the oil and gas prices are very different because the oil and gas sector has a very short amount of continuity. Um, with iron and ore, you need to build the ports, you need to build the train lines, you need to build the mines. Uh, with oil and with gas, lower oil prices, you also have lower, massively lower costs to exactly. the mines. Yeah, most definitely. But I think the oil side, you can move a rig around quite easily and you can sort of taper the supply. Uh, with iron ore, it takes them 20 years to build up to you know, Rio Tinto's production last year. Uh, you just can't turn that on and off. So I think those who have a long foresight in that sector could certainly do very well. There's a lot of Australian iron ore exporters who would love the capital, um, the price is right, uh, the exchange rate's right. Yeah, um, I think it's sure. I think it's a matter of who acts first. You know, I think once you see one or two start to go, yep. um, you know, we obviously we saw the deals that Fortescue have done in years gone by. Um, I, thought, I think that opened the eyes to Chinese investors to say, here's a scenario that does work, um, let's see if we can do the same sort of process. So. Great stuff. Thanks for your time. Thank that you. That was Brett Evans, Executive Director at Atlas Wealth Management.